Hello, my name is Daniel Hindi, and I've been dealing with remote teams for over 20 years. And I'm going to give you my tips and tricks on how to best manage your remote teams. For those of you who haven't managed remote teams, or have managed remote teams in the past and haven't seen great success, let me talk about the concerns that you may have. You're worried about their performance and focus. Are they actually working? Are they working from home? Do they have family members that may distract them? Transparency. What are they working on and how long is it taking them to finish a task? Availability. When I call, are they going to pick up? If they don't pick up, are they out exploring nature or is nature calling? Misaligned goals and priorities. Are my team members focusing on what I need them to focus on? Are they really working effectively? Well, the truth of the matter is these are all valid concerns and these should be concerns whether they're remote or not. And the truth is, if they're only becoming concerns if your team is remote, that means you have a flaw in your process. This vulnerability in your process is self-corrected by the environment. What do I mean by that? If you don't know if John is working or not, all you have to do is peek over. Is John at his desk? John's working. If you want to know what John's working on, all you have to do is look over John's shoulder, take a look at his screen, you know what he's working on. But come on, we know just because you're at your desk, just because there's code or a spreadsheet or whatever on your screen, doesn't mean you're actually working, or at a bare minimum, you're not working efficiently. I know these problems. I live these problems. I have solved these problems. For 20 years, I've been fine-tuning what I do to make sure that I can manage remote teams all across the globe in different time zones in different countries. I've read many books on this topic, watched many videos on this topic, and I've experimented to know what works and what doesn't. I get asked all the time, how do you manage a remote team that's thousands of miles away and make sure that they're productive consistently? Now, if you know me or have watched any of my videos, you know I prefer a mixture. I like a mixture of local resources as well as remote resources. And my team members are dispersed on something called a golden ratio. But some of us nowadays don't have the luxury of having some local and some remote resources. So we need to figure out what is the process that works either way. So it all starts with you. Now the good news is you're watching this video, which means you've already identified that this is a worthwhile cause. It's a problem that you need to fix and you're seeking information. So kudos to you. So what needs to change in you? You need to be disciplined. You need to own this initiative and make sure it's implemented throughout your organization. You need buy-in by all the managers at all levels and all team members at all levels. Now being disciplined could be as simple as making sure all meetings start on time and end on time. I can't tell you how many companies I deal with that have a systemic problem. Every meeting seems to perpetually be late, causing all other meetings to be late, and nobody complains about it. It feels like it's part of the culture and it's super frustrating. Even if small discipline levels like making sure meetings start on time and end on time will go a long way. Before we continue, make sure you like and subscribe to stay up to date with our latest content. It's free information. What do you got to lose? Communication. Now I know this is a generic topic that everybody talks about, but it's extremely important. You need to make sure that your communication is not measured by quantity, but by quality. Now there's something called over communicating and I'll talk about that in just a second. But the truth of the matter is, why are open concepts in offices so popular? The truth of the matter is it encourages communication. It encourages serendipitous communication. When you get up, even if you're on your headphones all day and you get up to get a cup of coffee, when you get up and move across the desk, you can hear your colleagues talking about subjects that may pertain to you or not. And even if you think it doesn't, it may inevitably come back to you. So all this information is being absorbed as a community and you lose this when your team goes remote. So how do you compensate? One way is to hold all hands meetings. Everything that I mentioned for remote teams still apply for local teams as well. They're good practices no matter what. All hands meetings means all hands on deck. Bring everybody into this meeting, all levels of management, all resources, so that they can hear a message from the leaders, specifically the CEO, on what is the goal and vision of the company. 
What are the current objectives, what we call OKRs and KPIs and so on, of the company as they change? So we all understand that we need to all be rowing in the same direction so we can get to where we need to be. Now, every department head contributes to this meeting by explaining how their department is contributing towards these objectives and goals so that then the team members understand why they're working on what they're working on not just doing what they're told, they understand where they're going. Imagine if everybody's rowing in a ship and you're below deck rowing. You have no idea where you're going. You're just doing what you're told, keep on rowing. Versus the people above the ship who can see the horizon, see where we're going. It's important for everybody to understand what is their North Star? How do they stay focused on the goals of the company? And from time to time, you need to make sure that everybody's realigned. Now, these meetings generally happen over digital communication, something like a Google Hangouts, Slack, Skype, whatever it may be. And when you're communicating with your team, I encourage everyone, please put a personal up-to-date picture of your face on your chat profile. Why? When people look at you, they know it's a person. Put your real name, not some screen name. This helps people understand you're dealing with people and not quote unquote resources. And this is especially important when you're dealing with team members that don't communicate for weeks and months. It's very important that they understand there's a person on the other side of that avatar. And if you have video capabilities, turn on your video camera. Make sure that people can see you. There's so much communication that occurs non-verbally through your body language. Up to 80% is communicated without the words that you are using. They enhance your words, your mannerism, your tone, your body language. It's extremely important to have this, not only for me to understand you, but for you to understand me. And another benefit is it makes sure that people who are getting into a rut working remotely, especially for the ones that have to work remotely and they don't really want to, you can find yourself in a rut. You make sure that they all get dressed up and presentable so that they can be on camera. And at a moment's notice, the camera is going to go on. You'll notice people who slowly go into a depressive mode will wake up and stay all day in their pajamas. And this is not really good. So part of that is making sure the morale of your team is up and that they understand it's like going to work. You get up, you shower, you get dressed, and you show up to work. That video camera is a virtual portal into the workplace. Now, remember what I said about over-communicating. It's extremely important not to over-communicate. What do I mean by that? Meetings that go on far too long. If a meeting could take half an hour, then it should be a half an hour and not an hour. Too frequent meetings. When you just have meetings and participants that don't care, it seems like they're zoning out or they're checking their emails during this meeting. If you don't need to be here, don't be here. Don't attend this meeting. Excessive chatter on the chat channels where it seems like you can't finish a sentence, you can't finish a thought without somebody interrupting you, chatting you, hey, do you have a second to talk? In some companies I work with, I've instituted a mute hour throughout the day where nobody's allowed to get on a chat channel unless it's extremely urgent and just allow people to go into deep work. That could be an hour, two, four hours a day. Just make sure that people have the ability to focus without being interrupted. I've even gone as far as having things like no meeting Wednesdays where nobody's allowed to hold a meeting on a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, doesn't matter, and have that day dedicated to deep work. That's 20% of your week dedicated to just deep, focused work. I'm going to challenge everybody watching this video to take one point that they've learned and tell us how they're going to implement it in their company and why they think that's going to be the most effective. And if you have a point I haven't mentioned, please put it in the comments below so we can all benefit. Process, 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 process. Please have a process that encourages productivity, transparency, and accountability. It's extremely important that you follow a system that encourages good results. How do you know if a process is good or not? By its results. Now remember, the process should work for you, not you for the process. And that's how you vet out these mechanisms to see if they're aiding your company or hindering them. Now I personally recommend Agile Project Management. It's dealt a lot with software development. It's a project management system that is meant to encourage 
productivity, transparency, and accountability, but gives you the ability to be agile and change the direction and change your initiatives and priorities as they ever change in the business. I have a video on Agile Scrum that you can watch to get more details. Now with any new process that is implemented in a business, it's always important to ease in, give yourself ramp time to make sure that everybody adjusts to the new process. Now, the new process will entail, whichever process is, it will entail a daily stand-up meeting. Some people call them huddles, some people call them daily syncs, it doesn't matter. It's a daily stand-up meeting that occurs, one, daily, and two, it's called a stand-up meeting, short enough to where you don't feel like you need to sit down. So what do I mean by this? The daily stand-up meeting is where your team gets together and every team member takes no more than two, three minutes to explain what they did yesterday, what they're going to do today, and if they're blocked and need help with anything. Now this is where again, point number one, the change starts with you, is extremely important because you need to make sure that you are disciplined, that you do hold this daily stand-up meeting. And if it's not you, that you have somebody doing it for you, and you make sure that project manager holds it daily. If it's daily at 9 a.m., it's 9 a.m., not 9.05, not 9.10, it's 9 a.m. Now the analogy I always use is like working out. What's the hardest thing of working out? Is making it to the gym. So the first thing you want to do is standardize, then ritualize, then optimize. Those are my three steps to make sure your process is successful. Now, going back to my analogy of working out, the first thing is getting up every morning and going to the gym. That's the hardest part, right? So every morning, you and your buddy go to the gym. You go to the gym every morning, every morning, every morning. You're standardizing. They know every morning, 6 a.m., you're going to the gym. Every morning, 6 a.m., you go to the gym. Now, you know it's been ritualized when your buddy doesn't show up and you're still getting up, getting dressed, going to the gym, even driving to the gym. Your brain's on autopilot thinking of something else because this has now become muscle memory and you're going straight to the gym. It's ritualized. So on the daily stand-up meetings, you're having them daily, daily, daily. And if you're on vacation, if you got sick, somebody's holding that meeting for you to make sure it happens. The team still meets on that meeting, and amongst themselves report what they did and what they're going to do. Now, step number three is to optimize. Once you go to the gym on a daily basis, once you go there without excuse, you're there ritualistically at the gym, you're already seeing results and you're probably seeing great results, but you'll get even better results if then you start optimizing. However, if day one I put too much on you, the whole system is going to break down. You're, you'll stop coming to the gym. Same thing with the process. If I try to fix everything all at once, it'll fall apart. Make sure your team has autonomy and accountability. Now, when you give your team autonomy, it means every member has the ownership of a particular task and is capable of completing that task by themselves. Now, if you're constantly looking over their shoulder and micromanaging them, you know this is a problem because they become disconnected and give you excuses like, I just did what you told me to. You know, if you hear that excuse that you're micromanaging them, they're disconnected and they don't care anymore. So with your remote team, you want to make sure that they're autonomous. They have the ability to fulfill on the tasks that were given to them completely and own them and take responsibility and pride in their work. Accountability. When you give them clear and measurable SMART objectives, I have another video on SMART objectives, make sure you check that out, where it's extremely clear on what is requested, what does success look like, and when is it expected. So not only is it measurable and clear and concise, it also has a timeline on it on when that task is due. At the end of that task, it's up to you to make sure they're held accountable. Whether this is a developer outputting out a new feature, you have a timeline on it and you make sure that it's due on a particular date and you hold them accountable to it. If you have your product team coming up with a brand new feature that will increase sales, you make sure that once that feature is out that you gather analytics on that feature to make sure if it increased sales or not. Everybody needs to be held accountable for the work and decisions that are made not in fear of repercussion. It's more for you to understand what worked well, let's do more of that. 
what didn't work so well, let's do less of that, adjust so we all get better and optimize the business as a fully functional single unit system. And when you do that, I personally tell my team that we win together and lose together. So that when team members find somebody who is the weakest link that month, that they go and help them because we win together and lose together. And guess what? This month, you may be the weakest link. Next month, it may be me and I need your help. So when they have a collaborative effort, when they understand, yes, I have the autonomy to do my part and you have the autonomy to do your part. When we succeed, we succeed together. And when we lose, we lose together and adjust and make ourselves all better. Coaching and nurturing. This is extremely important to any team, but more often than not, when you have a remote team, you may forget. God knows I'm guilty of this as well. Every employee that I have has a very clear definition of what their responsibilities are. You may ask yourself, isn't it clear when you're a developer what your responsibilities are, when you're a product manager, a designer? Grab one of your employees that isn't doing that well and ask them what is the definition of their job? What are their responsibilities? And see if it matches yours. It probably doesn't. So I have a meeting with them and I explain, here's the definition of your job and here's what I expect out of you. Here are the five clear and measurable metrics that will allow you to succeed and become an A player on my team. I write them down, I explain them, and on a frequent basis, make sure that I score every one of these so that they have feedback. You'll be surprised how many employees get surprised when they're let go because they weren't given enough feedback to let them know you think you're doing a good job, you're not. You'll be surprised on how many underperforming employees get let go and it's a surprise to them. You know you didn't do a good job when they're surprised. If you were let go because of your performance and when you are fired, it's a surprise, that's a flaw in management. Management should be able to explain to you before it's too late what you're doing well at and what you're not doing well at and what are the expectations. Again, with your remote team, it's extremely important that they have these definitions and that you constantly hold them accountable so that they could be an A player on your team. Make sure you challenge your team to be the best that they can be. Give them challenges that are difficult but attainable. If you've never read up on the state of flow, I highly recommend understanding what that means so you can constantly push your employees to be the best version they can be. Last but not least, acknowledgement. It goes a long way when you say thank you to one of your employees, when you recognize good work. It goes even further when you recognize a team member amongst his peers and even further when you recognize them amongst the entire company. In the all hands meetings, it's nice to have a shout out period where people can acknowledge work of others and even have an MVP award, an employee of the month, whatever it is that works for your culture. But acknowledgement goes a long way. There's so many unsung heroes in tech. You have so many QA people who make sure that the quality of the product is great, but they never get recognized for it. There's so many unsung heroes in your team that you make sure that they understand we understand how valuable you are. And if the rest of the company doesn't, I'm gonna make sure that they do understand by acknowledging you and your work in front of others and giving you a thank you and a kudos on the good work that you've done. I hope this video gave you clear and logical steps to best manage your remote teams.